Yo, what's what's going on, ladies and gentlemen? It's your boy D Wise. Ah, it's episode nine of your favorite independent show, OTV Live. Um, a lot of things going on, man. I am I am sick, not not in a contagious way. Ben but, Mappy. Oh shit, man! I ain't trying to call for nobody. But um, yeah, I, I just came. I literally just came from the doctor's office, and they told me that I got a uh, I got a infection. Uh, ear infection that is now <laughs> yeah, moving towards my <laughs> be specific I just saw uh, yeah brother uh, listen, and... listen 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 I got my test back I'm good all right. yeah I got all my shit back man right. yo we having a good we're having a good I had a good weekend um I had a to MC uh a baby shower actually where, where was this at then white plains okay I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say what company I was working for or whatever Okay. But I went and MC this shit, and it was so crazy, man. Like it was, it was, it was lit. But then I had to break up a fight at the end of the night. Oh, word! Yeah, like what was it Fridays? Was <laughs> <laughs> it Sizzler? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yo, yo, turn this. Is this mic on? Yeah, it's mic. Oh, okay, check, check, cool, check. cool. Yeah. Yo, our guest is in the building, man. We, we, you know what? We're gonna forego the uh, old school way of doing it, man. We're gonna. Let the uh, our guest tonight is none other than uh, hip hop artist Stagger Lee. Yeah. You probably remember him from uh, I wouldn't even say back in the day because it's only it's, been like it's kind of back in the day. Okay, it's almost kinda... almost back in the day, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. We're gonna we're gonna talk to him a little bit later, but let me tell you about this crazy ish that went on. Yeah, break it down. So I get there. <clears throat> I had to go to a memorial service for a young lady that passed away I used to work with. Mm-hmm. So I was already feeling kind of, you know, down. Um, I got there and I was like, you know what? I can't let this, you know, I can't let this, you know, the bring, mood kinda yeah, break, you up, yeah, yeah. break me up. Mm-hmm. So I was like, ah, F it. So I went out there and I gave a great show. You know, I danced around. I, I started calling, you know what I'm saying? I started, uh, you know, just doing my MC thing. Mm. So they, they they were appreciative. They um they tipped me and all that and and they just did. real quick, you do have a call. I, I don't know. If oh saying. word? Yeah. Well, let's see. Let's see who it is. Uh oh. Daniel This might be random. It might be a random, be random let's yeah. see who it is. Right, you know what? Oh he hold he hung up? No, oh, he hung up. Call him back. You want to call him back? Call him back. I'll try and call him back. Yeah. Call him back. You might be thinking he's calling into uh Frank's show. Hey, listen. You mean he might come in we'll sideways with a poli- political question? I don't know. But he might hit you with the. So how do you think about that France Yo, <laughs> presidential? Race? I know, right? Oh, he's not picking up. All right, he's All not right. picking up. All right. Sorry, well, Daniel. I get there. I'm chilling. Like we're doing it. It's it's cool. And then um, by the end of the night, you know, a couple of the the uh, the father, the mm-hmm. father of the, the the child, their friends, they were outside, and they just started arguing. Now, mind you, you know, the DJ that was there. I'm helping them with the equipment, getting mm-hmm. it out to the to the court, to the, to the curb, and they look like they were about to go to war. And if they would have trampled all, the, I mean, turntables, thousands of dollars. Yeah, thousands of dollars. So I, I, you know, I took my big brolic ass and just <laughs> got in the middle of these two dudes. Did 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 you did you uh, have a flashback to when you were doing security in Newark, New Jersey? Oh shit! <laughs> nah, nothing nothing could bring me back to when I was in Newark. Oh my, they was going they was gonna clap my ass. They pulled out the burner quick. Yeah, New York game, man. <laughs> New York yeah, My girl was going to rehearsal out there like 12 o'clock at night, walking through like the worst neighborhood on earth. Like, oh, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. crazy. It's crazy. But, um, yeah, other than that, everything is good, man. I'm trying to get back on. I'm trying to get back on God's good graces so he, <laughs> he can make sure that I'm all right, man, because I got shows to do this week. That's right. But, um, yo, uh, shout out to our sponsor tonight is uh, Koi Creative Space. Out in White Plains, New York. Make sure you go check them out. Uh, if you would like a uh, space to create, uh, draw. If you need a space to, um, you know, write a script. If you just need a space to create, uh, they also have an office, uh, an uh, a actual office space that you can rent out. So if you need to have a meeting, you need to have a presentation, it's an awesome place to go. Just check them, uh, check them out on uh, create. Koi, K-O-I, creative, creativespace.com, and go check them out. Um, let me see. Uh, let me see what 
they have going on. They just told me that they have something brand new going on. So go to KoiCreativeSpace.com. Uh, their phone number is 914-428-3194, located at 169 Maranek Avenue, second floor, White Plains, New York. You can go downstairs, Hudson Grill. Uh, you, you you got uh, Lily's and I think another bar, Brazen Fox, right on the same block. Oh, yeah. So there's I plenty heard, of places. Uh, Black Bear Close. Yeah, I was just about to get to that. Oh, okay. Yeah, so if you want to go downstairs and have something to eat, there's mad places to eat and drink, have a drink. But um, check out KoiCreativeSpace.com. Uh, mention OTV Live, and you get 20% off of your membership. Um, yeah, there's another end of an era. Black Bear Saloon and Copperface Jacks, which was formerly Wicked Wolf, is now closed. They are done. Why are they closed? Uh, from what I understand, I think they were losing money. Well, they opened up four places. There was four places yeah, going up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so you have Black Bear, Copperface, they bought Lazy Boy, and then, which used to be Lazy Saloon, they ended up turning into Whiskey Creek. So now you have two, you have one staple, which is Lazy Boy. Everybody went to Lazy Boy. And then Whiskey Creek was the new spot. But when you, I'm not going to say they overextended themselves, but if you have four bars on the same block yeah. and you all own it, that's yeah. a lot. Yeah. There's a lot of overhead there. A lot of overhead. Um, yeah, man. So it's just like uh, Kelly's Thirsty Turtle. It's all done. Oh, that's that's been close. I'm, I'm oh yeah, touch, yeah, bro. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not, Damn, Stag, you ain't been up there nah, in a minute, I huh? Been a minute. Yeah. Oh, Thirsty Turtle, I remember that. Cat yeah, Lee, man, that that's the thing. that's the underage drinking spot of the century. Oh yeah, yeah. That was. I was up there with O'Brien's in Rochelle. I was saying, oh, down, downtown's. Oh, O'Brien's in New Rochelle. Downtown's in New Rochelle was another spot. It didn't even have a sign. It would just have to, like, find it. <laughs> <laughs> That's like Dicey Riley's Dicey back in the day. Ah. I'm showing my age right now. Dicey's. Yo, shout out to Dicey Riley's, yo. Yeah. Dicey Riley's. Wow. Yo, shout out to our uh, intern, A.A. Ron. Yo, I heard you got drunk a couple weeks ago. Did you oh, throw up on God. yourself? <laughs> Your mic's on, just so you know. Your mic is on. Hey, hey, Ron, what you know about underage drinking? <laughs> underage drinking is very bad. Yo, I swear, I, I got a... It was my brother's reception. He had just gotten married the day before. Wait a second. Your mother took no. a picture. You drunk. I have it. Wait, no. Nah. <laughs> nah. Stop. Stop. Your, okay. your, mom's, it, your mom's emailed it to me. <laughs> that wasn't my first time, just to say you know. It, it, it was, though, in fact, my first time getting, a.k.a. white girl wasted. White girl waist. White did, girl waist. Did you throw? Did you throw up on your space jams? All right, all right. No, 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 no. I, I didn't wear space jams. <laughs> how, all right. how wasted is white girl? Is that broken okay. heel, vomiting the hair? This is like. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna put it in. Hold, hold his hair you. back. Hold his <laughs> hair back. <laughs> this is when you're in the party. You're fine, right? All right. As soon as you walk out that door, it's like snap. You forget everything that happens. Yeah, oh, all right, all right. Like I yeah. woke up the next morning yeah. not knowing how I got home. All right. See, because a white girl will drink two Heinekens. Then do a whole bunch of stuff and be like, I was wasted. I didn't know what I was doing. No, nah, I mean like the down south white girls. Oh, yeah. There we go. I like party down, down south, south white yeah, girls. Yeah. All right, cut his mic off. Yeah, that's <laughs> enough for him. All right, let's get into to the 10 independent albums in the country, ladies and gentlemen. Here they are. Uh, let's start with number 10. Live from, live from Welcome to 1979. That's a weird name. Uh, Jason Isbell and the 400 Unit. It's an EP of live uh, stuff. I didn't get to listen to anybody. I've just been sick as a dog, but I'm here. So um, go check them out. Uh, live from Welcome to 1979. Uh, number nine is a Robin Hitchcock album. Robin Hitchcock. I, uh, I don't even know who the hell this person is. Uh, <laughs> is, this, all right, is this hip hop or just? No, cool? this is. Oh, all right. um, Billboard only does. Okay, I'm, I'm reading it now. I'm oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Billboard only does one independent uh, chart, right. and that's just albums. So number eight is uh, "Make the Best of It" by Have Mercy. Uh, number seven, Holden. Uh, no, actually, I think he dropped down. But um, last week he was number nine. This week he's number seven. Jason Aldean. They don't know. <clears throat> still on the list, though. He's still in the top. 10. Yeah, yeah, he's still in the top ten. Um, last week was number two, still holding on strong in the ten, top ten uh, area is uh, Joey Badass. Joey. All, all American Badass, man. Yeah. 
And um, holding strong at number five since last week. Last week was number five. This week's number five again is uh, Father John Misty with Pure Comedy. Uh, number four, uh, Back Road DP by Taylor Ray Holbrook. Number three, <laughs> Metallica, Hardwired to Self Destruct. Last week was number one. And back down to number three. And I, I got a feeling it'll be back at number one. Yeah, you think? If they like, release oh, a new single, oh, we will. slipped. Let's throw some more money into it. Nah. <laughs> number two is uh, Death Song by the Black Angels. But it's weird because their album cover looks like a Pepsi commercial. Yeah, yeah or 3D. Or like a candy. Like yeah, a like some candy. kind of crazy. I like it. Uh, you know what? Next week, I'm going to go in depth about these guys from this week. Okay. Um, but we got our guest in the building, so we're going to get to him. But number one, and this album cover is strange as hell. It's Black Bear, and the album is called Digital Drug Lord. No, I think I th I'm getting the vibe. Look at one and four. I'm thinking that that's album covers for the ones that they don't have artwork for. Nah, man. No, These are the cause, actual album cause covers. Because ba Backroads has the same album cover as Digital Drug Lord. Nah, 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 nah. No, on my screen, I got it's that. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. They, they, they sometimes they they don't put it out there yeah. because either the uh, Billboard has a terms and conditions, oh. and if your album cover does not meet there yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. you know how that goes <laughs> so you know if you have a curse word or whatever they'll just put this black you know record thing on there but um if you look at the screen number one it's got a woman covering up her breasts with uh pill bottles oh yeah i didn't see that <laughs> okay. yeah. sign of the times sign of the times man but um that's number one uh this is the week ending may 13th 2017 so, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I want to introduce our guest tonight. We, uh, I did not get a chance to go home and get the sound effects. So, uh, yeah, I'll just do my own little clap. <laughs> <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, our guest tonight is uh, Stagger Lee, right. uh, hip-hop artist. Uh, he's from my hometown. You know, I'll play a little bit of this, this uh, MVP joint he was down with. Sure. Y'all probably know Stagger Lee from that joint and uh what, what was the other joint, man? The, the roll with the la 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 joint. Yeah, the la 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 most people la, know la, that. La, 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 la. So yeah, exactly. Yeah. That is, yeah. A A Ron knows it now. A A Ron was like, Who knows who? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get that a lot. Oh, that was your joint? That was your joint? Yeah, 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 yeah man. And then this is the follow up question. Oh, you from New York? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, like, Where do most people think you're from? Like Texas or Florida. Okay. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Okay, so know. yo, listen, man. So I mean, damn, bro, you from Yonkers, New York, from man. Yonkers, yeah. Uh, to be perfectly honest with you, do you, I mean, outside of DMX and Locks, yeah, you the only one. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's others. There's others. No, there's uh, others. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That, um, damn, I'm trying to think of some other people. That uh, was at the casino or was it Casino? Remember that cat? Oh, right? okay. I don't know what the name. Sporty Thieves. Oh, sp yeah, of course. Jay we have Sporty Thieves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm Mary J. Blige. Yeah. Well, I'm oh, talking right. about hip hop artists. Yeah, man. I mean, well, she's you know, I would consider her hip hop ish. Yeah, yeah, she was. Yeah, she's the queen, queen of, of hip hop, hip -hop army, soul. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. You're right. You're right. But yeah, um, Bill Black. people. Yeah, well, Bill Black. But Bill. Yeah, people ain't gonna know that. Man. Yeah, well, yeah. Bill. Shout out to Bill Blass. Um, I think he's living in North Carolina now. I don't think he's. Yeah, yeah. Last time I saw him, I think he's he's down south. But um, Bill Blass. If it wasn't for Bill Blass, a lot of people wouldn't have got on. 
You know what yeah. I mean? In in Yonkers, he put a lot of people on. Yeah. He, well, shit. There's there's video of him battling like DMX. Oh yeah. Yeah yeah. 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 So um, there was another cat that was under DMX's label. He was on Bloodline. Uh, Bizarre Royale. Yeah, and there was another cat. Um, jeez, I can't think of his name. Oh jeez, I forgot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, anyway, but um, yo, where, what part of Yonkers did you? Uh... Bronx River Road. I'm from Bronx River Road. Okay. Yeah. All right, yeah. cool, cool, cool. And you said you went to Lincoln. We went were just Lincoln. talking. Yeah. A. A. Ron goes to Lincoln. Lincoln. Yeah, Lincoln. <laughs> Circa 1989 to 91. Oh, damn. Yeah, we just dated myself right there. Yeah, this people, all right, though. People's parents are like, oh, wait, wait, wait he just say 89 to 91? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yo, shout out to Ty, Tyvee and Corey. He's going to give us a shout out, man. Ty, what's going on? Um... So, yo, uh, tell me about growing up in, in, in Yonkers. I mean, I know my experience, but tell me a little bit about your experience and how you ended up in the hip-hop realm. Yeah. Um, I mean, basically, I just got turned on to hip-hop like everybody else. Like, the when I was young, hip-hop was kind of like in its... I don't want... I hate to use cliche terms, but, you know, like formative years, like still okay. finding its identity. And so being from New York, you get exposure to hip-hop a lot more than someone say from Texas or Florida because it's right there like you're getting mixtapes like I heard tapes of DMX when I was in like seventh grade mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so you know you hear it you get into it you kind of you, you got this love for it which I'm sure you all have where you you like you love it so much you want to be a part of it how could I incorporate myself into this how could I you know amplify this feeling I get whether it's graffiti or dancing whatever so I couldn't dance I tried writing graffiti I, tr <laughs> I tried every I tried every element He's like, I of get it. it and then um, so writing you know it starts with the freestyle and the battle rap the whole thing and then it's just meeting people you know um, like minded people you're out somewhere oh you rhyme I rhyme too let's get together yeah, of course, do something. Man, oh, I I beats. yeah my man makes beats home studios you know Mike stand in the closet that whole thing and then Doing mix, you know, I don't want to say mixtapes, but just recording, doing joints. Well, I mean, people, you know? listen, that by that time we, were, it is a mixtape because at the end of the day we were recording everything on tapes. Yeah, <laughs> but like four track tapes, like the XL twos. Oh yeah, play, yeah, hell like yeah, man! I, with I the did my first taping over and like it's the sound quality is messed up because you taping over it again and again. Right. And the task cam. And yeah, of course. Over. A, a Ron don't know nothing about no, that. No, this is pre-smartphone rap. Is, 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 yo, uh, uh, yo, <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Turn, turn his mic on real, real quick. Yo, listen. Let me, let me explain something to you. So, my first demo that I ever made was done on a four track. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, you know how a tape, just a regular, you know, tape. Yeah. TDK, whatever. The this, originals. The originals. Okay. <laughs> so the tape now, you, you had audio on both sides. Yeah. yeah, size A and B. This is crazy. So, so wait, 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 wait. I'm about so to break tape, it down. You had, it on, you had to <laughs> no. take it out and turn it around. And turn yeah. it over. But you know that already. But wait, wait, wait. I'm going to tell you how crazy it is. So you have audio on the tape. You have four different audios. You have A side, right and left. Or, yeah, left and right. So red and white, mm -hmm. right? Stereo. Yeah. And then on the B side, you had stereo, left and right. Now, what the machine would do is take those four tracks and make them linear. Yeah. So picture like a tape, but separate that little thin tape into four lanes. Right. Right? So each lane becomes a track. So like one is the vocal, second is the ad-libs, third is like another track of ad-libs, yeah. and maybe fourth is the beat. Is the beat. Oh, so it's like so, when we, we are on Pro Tools and like we right. use different tracks. Yeah. Right. So y'all have to do exactly. one tape. Oh, this was the analog. That's, we, we, that's, the, I, that, that's the analog tape. Yeah. Man, all so, I gotta do is yo, right dude, click. the type. <laughs> Yeah, of course, but you had to be mad tight. You there was no chance for you to keep on doing it over well, you, and over. You could do it. You but could each do time it, but you do it. You're going over the same track, like the same uh, layer of tape. So it, the sound quality decreases with mm -hmm. each time. You yeah, do with it. each time you do it. So like basically, what we call it, you guys have to basically be um, one take Timmy's. One takes. Yeah, pretty much. Wow. Pretty but much. It makes for good training, right? Later Hell on, yeah. When you're a rapper, you go in, you're just like trying to knock it out. It's even are, worse than a singer. People are punching. 
they're punching every th- just punch me and they're doing one line. I one hate line. punches. And I can hear I don't mind because I know this technical aspect and if sometimes you gotta punch if you're trying to get a, a vibe and maybe it's like this back and forth type of thing. But you could hear some of them like when they're taking that breath or when you're like, Alright, I know you're punching. You yeah, know, like of course. It's just not even the art no more. You just you I know. listen to it all the time. But you mm-hmm. know what? These studio cats that they have out there now, they know how to cover up a lot oh, of different yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. Well, but um <clears throat> auto tune is amazing. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But uh-huh. but but getting back to it, so you started doing your tapes. You started. Yeah. When did you start becoming, you know, prominent? Because you know everybody had that moment where they was, you know, we doing our tapes, and then people start hearing our work. Yeah. And they start discovering you. So how did how did that come about? Um, I mean, I ain't, I've never had nobody call me prominent before. So thank you. But uh, you, I don't. Bruh, <laughs> yeah. Dude, come you on just, now. You just mean like having a record out, and then people notice like, okay, you have a record out because anyone who makes music. Anyone who, who is really in this and tries to make music, when you look at people who are out, you know that there's more to it like than just uh, judging them on one song. You're know, like, okay, there's got to be something to this cat because he didn't get a deal and have a label behind him and have people mm-hmm. dumping money into him if he didn't have something other than this song. So while I might not like this song, there's got to be other stuff. If, right. you're, if you're an adult, you know, edu- someone educated in hip-hop, you look at that and you see it. But um, probably, I mean... I was writing and thinking like, oh, you know, am I dope? Like, you don't really know until you're spitting for someone else. Right. But then I got down with this kid, Scratch. Scratch got a mod. I don't know if you remember Scratch. Yeah, of course. Right, all right. So Scratch uh, met me when I was probably 18. Scratch was from Brooklyn. He had done joints for special ed. He had had his foot in the industry. Mm -hmm. So he was the first, like, all right, let me hear what you got. And so he was the first one whose opinion I trusted, who was like, yo, you're dope, you know? Okay. And even then, I mean... You know how it is, the progression, man. You rhyme and you're like, man, I'm the shit. And, mm-hmm. and, I'm the, and then like two years later, you look back at those joints and you're like, oh, yeah, man. That was trash. Was <laughs> yeah, you know, and then so you keep going. Yeah, you know. Um, so probably at like 18, I knew that I had something worth pursuing. Okay. Like, okay, I can do this. You know, like people are telling me, or when I was rhyming in front of other dudes, I'm like, man, I think I'm doper than these dudes. But like, I don't, am I? Like, I don't really know. Am I? Because it's hard to be honest with yourself. You know? Oh yeah, of course. Man. It's, I mean, people think they can, but it's hard to be like, <clears throat> you know, I'm whack. You know, it's hard. I mean, you you know, nah, I'm, I like, I'm whack. I think I'm dope, but you know, because some people they don't, you know, I'm I'm the shit, and they just rhyme, and you're like, wow, this who is, yeah, is telling this, this kid? Yeah, yeah, who is? Like, you don't have any real friends because it's like what let you walk around. With Yo. snot hanging out your nose. I mean, I wouldn't lie. If you're my man. I'm, right. I'm like, you Yo, are, yeah, I wouldn't let you, got, you right, walk you around like right that. Here, yeah. man, you got something right here. And that's the equivalent of these dudes' friends gassing them up. To and, me. you know, the one thing I wanted to touch upon, you being from, because there was a lot of hate. When you had. No. Oh, <laughs> boy. When you got on, when man. you had those, when you had those singles out. Yeah, man. And the album was about to drop. Yo, these cats out in Yonkers, Yo. man. i tell you about some. And. I, you know what? Yeah. I'm going balls to wall. I don't give a fuck. Y- y'all Yonkers cats out there, y'all a lot of bitches, man. Y'all don't want to pat anybody on the back and be like, yo, that's some good <laughs> shit that's or problem. whatever. Yo, Yonkers cats, and I'll be the first one to say it, y'all are some hating ass yeah. yo, motherfuckers. It's not even just Yonkers. And I hate to, I'm not definitely not this in New York, but one thing I've noticed about out-of-state artists, Florida, Texas, these people support their homegrown artists. <coughs> yeah. They support them. Someone does a show with their neighborhood cat. You don't know who they are, but it, it, they're a neighborhood cat. Everyone shows up to support them. They're buying their tapes. They're showing them love. In New York, it's like they hating you. you know, mm-hmm. they're, they're just hating on you. It's like, why are you hating me? I'm from here. It's this like, you know, holier than thou, like, well, everything from here has got to be doper because we're the birthplace of hip hop, you know, and I get that. You know what I mean? Again, I'm not, you know, all respect to New York, but it's hard. It's hard being an artist. Um, be, when you're not getting home, home love, homegrown support. Yeah, you know? like I'm flying and down to Texas to do shows and get paid. In New York, nobody in New York is booking me. Right? Crazy. No, oh, Crazy. brother, I already know. But they they say if if someone's not hating you, then you're not doing something right. So you know, yeah, I hear you. It's just the fact that I, it was extreme. It was extreme. I well, the, the, <laughs> and the not, elephant in the room. Yeah, I mean, I, you I, being a, a, a cat from Yonkers. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we I, I know you we've hung out together. You know what I'm saying? But the fact of the matter is you being a white rapper. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. You from Wyo. A lot of black 
either black artists or black people wanted to like uh a man lot, f that cat a lot he ain't M. a lot i mean and uh i'm gonna be honest some of the shit hurt i mean you, know, <laughs> you would read it online and i'd be like damn i mean out, out and people would ask me like yeah you know i'm not i don't pay attention i'm just doing my thing i'm trying to, and i'd be home reading the shit and i'd be like come on man <laughs> I'd be reading it like they would get personal on shit, and I'd be like, "Man, how do you even know that?" Like, <clears throat> yeah, it the, was the problem is, and, and I'm just gonna be really honest, it's not like, all right, he's a white rapper, I'm gonna hate him because he's white. I don't think it was like a racial. I like, don't think it was a racial thing. No, it's the fact think, that you're from you're from the you're from our hood. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. A problem you was went, I was nicer than a lot of cats, like of all colors, and. uh yeah, they, the there was problem. that's the problem. Is they was like, man, oh, gee, nah, you know, the grumbling. But also at that time, like when I first started rhyming, there was no Eminem, right? Ninety three, Eminem didn't exist. Right, he came no. out till ninety nine. So, and then after he dropped, which was pr like prior, uh, before you know, predates my first record deal. Mm -hmm. He dropped and then like took over the game, and then they calling him like the Elvis of hip hop, like how he stole the culture and all this. I mean, obviously the opinion, public opinion of him has changed now. No, of course. But at that time. You know, he had people's ear because he was with Dre. People, you know, gave him that listen. He got past that mm -hmm. first door. But then after, there was a lot of hate on him because they felt like he stole the culture and took over the game. How come he's selling so many records? Is he doing something so different from the next black artist? And then... I don't think it was... It, you when, know what? It, it didn't... Uh, no, no, that's right. I would say when I came up, people were, skept were hesitant. Um, like, we're not letting this happen again. Yeah, of course. That type of shit. Even though I was like on some totally other shit, like Eminem kind of came from the standpoint of like the crazy white kid from the trailer park, and I was mm -hmm. on some street shit. I mean, I know that's people don't know that because they hear the Rocky Body and the Road with MVP. No, I was of course, on some street shit. And I so, know. I, I remember the and, old and freestyles yeah. you used and, to have, and, and, and you know, people weren't really used to that. Like, oh, what's this white kid? He has no street credibility. That whole thing. And then I would be with street cats, being like, "Wait, I don't understand. I mean, they say yeah, you're like, not street. We need to take some pictures of you." And, this, and I'm like, man, I'm not trying to. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, okay. So, catch me up. So, what happened right before you end up getting the deal? Because there's uh, a... Before. So, well, deal... All right, it was a production contract. My first deal was a production contract. So, I was still doing the whole running around things. Mm -hmm. You know, I was... Doing uh, shows. I was messing with this girl. She was. She had to hook up with Molly Mall. I was doing joints with him. You know, and I was getting a lot of support. Like I, like I said, Jesse West. I would meet these street cats who had, like... In my mind, I mean, the ultimate street credibility, like just underground joints, straight hip hop, and these dudes were like, "Yeah, you, you nice. Like, we're gonna, we wanna, yeah. we wanna fuck with you." And, and, uh, yo, am I allowed to? Yeah, yeah, you yeah, good, right. baby. So they, you know, they wanna fuck with me, and um, so I'm doing those joints, but I'm not getting like, m you know, uh, a deal, like the the push of a major label machine behind me, which is what I knew I needed, you know. Um, at that time, people were doing, you know, it was like cash money, like selling records out the trunk of your car. It wasn't mm -hmm. like it is today. There wasn't no, like YouTube course. and you didn't have the outlet of Instagram and stuff to, to get noticed. So then I did a brick house thing. I don't know if you're familiar with that, right? I had the ind I had a lot of independent people who wanted mm -hmm. to be bigger than they were. No disrespect to anyone, but just they, they had the best intentions. They believed in my talent, but they just didn't have the connections to do what I needed to be done. So, um, cut to Max Perez, who was a very talented producer. Well, wasn't, didn't he start out doing Max Perez? Wasn't he with freestyle artists before? He was, had some connection to that. I don't know. I'm not going to label him as freestyle, but he had some connection to no, that. No, I'm just saying he was an yeah, exact no, I really man. don't know. I really don't know. But okay. he, he was real talented, still is. I mean, still doing this thing. So we were, um, I had went to him one time when I was signed with G Money Records. And he was like, man, I would love to fuck with you, but I know you're, you know, you're signed with this other girl. And mm -hmm. so then later on, a couple years later, when I wasn't signed, I had bumped into him. Yo, Stag, let's work together. All right, cool. So how many deals did you have, Stag? A few. Oh, a damn. Few. A okay. couple of independents, three majors, you know. Um, three majors? Three majors, yeah. EMI, Positiva, Artist Direct, um, Universal Motown. Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. well, we're going we, we'll we to have this. We're going to touch yeah. on those. Yeah. Um, my question, uh, I think we got a, I think we got somebody that's, that wants to ask a question, actually. Sorry, man. I get nerd. My, I'm like cringing. Like, <laughs> 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 it was like, the phone lines are blowing up. Stag, nah, we got to. Yeah. No, nah, oh, no. Somebody, somebody messaged somebody else. It's all right. We good. good. Um, I'll take it. I mean, I'm saying. So, <laughs> so when it came, okay. 
So when it came down, yeah. what I wanted to touch on was you were like one of the first artists that ever had a deal with a pretty much a social media company. With Artist Direct. Artist Direct. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't understand that Artist Direct was like, it was like a cross between like iTunes and like Billboard. Like they had, like when you went to artistdirect.com, it was like uh, CD Baby, but 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 digital. It was real okay. interactive. It was yeah. real interactive. They before had... everything was interactive. Exactly. Was, was this around MySpace before? After... Right. Yeah. MySpace. Okay. Time, MySpace. I think MySpace in... had MySpace Records or something. They were yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Trying... So MySpace, MySpace had MySpace Records. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Actually, MySpace Records actually put out like. Uh, what was that band? Not um, Fallout Boy. Uh, I write sins, not tragedies. What What was that? Oh my Let's goodness! See, see. There was a uh, Google it. Yeah, I know. I think they had they had a lot of the the artists that were on Fuel by Ramen. Okay. Which is okay, okay. yeah, yeah. They were on my MySpace records. Like MySpace had put out like. A bunch of artists on their joint. Fall Out Panic Boy at the my... disco. Panic, Panic at, at the, the disco. disco. I remember wow. Panic at the disco was on like MySpace Records wow. Volume One or something like that. I did not know that. Yeah. So I bought it because I was working at Target at the time. Okay. And they were like, "Oh, MySpace just put out their own album." I was like, "What?" I got a copy. <laughs> I need yeah, that. Yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah, "Okay." Yeah. And they had all different kinds of yeah. people on the on that, the album. It was it predominantly went, rock. Rock. You but... bought this at a record store, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so, uh, Aaron, uh, if you don't know, Aaron, no, it's Aaron. Oh, it's Aaron. Oh, Aaron. <laughs> but you don't know, a record store. It used to be a, a commercial space. <laughs> let, where... let me let me put you on to something, yeah. young buck. Nah. Mm -hmm. But um, Artist Direct was like one of the first like social media platforms that they actually put an artist out on. Yeah. Were you the first? You weren't the first. No, I wasn't the first, but I was the first wave. There was a few artists. There was a white kid, Poverty. There was Poker Face. He was a hip hop artist from Arizona, I think, from Phoenix or mm -hmm. some part of Arizona. Um, and there was, man, there was other uh, other genre of genres of music signed to it. I don't I don't really recall. Okay, I got uh, that. you. And, and what it was is Ted Field. You know, you're familiar with the name Ted Field. Yeah. So Ted Field is one of the co-founders of Interscope. It, it, his daughter, apparently, like if you know the history of Tupac, his daughter was the one who had heard Tupac's demo tape and was like, you know, like, Dad, I like this. And then he signed him based on that. Wow. And then Tupac went on, obviously, to be, you know, Interscope and, you know, Tupac, you know? And yeah. uh, so Ted Field had broke away, and he had a company called Radar Pictures, which was producing movies. Yeah. They did a lot of movies. He's still doing it now. Um, he also, his name's Ted Fields. His son, Marshall, he named his uh, chain department store after his son, Marshall, Marshall right. Fields. Yeah, yeah, Marshall So Fields. he got a lot of money. He's a billionaire, you know? Yeah. So he left and wanted to start another record company. I don't, I, I, I don't know what's behind that, if he loved for music or if he just wanted to do something like Interscope mm -hmm. to show he could do it. You know what I mean? Some big boys with big toys. You know, yeah, yeah, of, of course. You know? Yeah. So He uh, wanted to be a player in the game. You know what I mean? And uh, he had the money, so he did it. You know, he had the, he got the space on Wilshire Boulevard in L.A. He had the, uh, he has hiring people with their ear to the streets, go find me the hot acts and that type wow, of thing. Wow, okay. So we get to this label, which I'm like, all right, cool. This dude's got money. He's enthusiastic. He takes me in the office. He's rapping my rhymes back to me. I'm like, this is going to work. But then you kind of, I kind of was, and I hate, I mean, I'm just going to tell the truth. I'm not trying to insult anyone. No, no, no. But Listen, then I man, go we... into the label office and like cats got their feet up on the desk. They're reading the newspaper, you know, that type of thing. They're just uh -huh. like collecting a check. So right. I'm looking around, nobody I'm like, was oh, really no. Nobody I mean, was really putting no. I mean, they they putting foots to the ground. And they're using to get... the name to get into the club and all of that. Uh, I'm looking at it. And I'm like, oh man, this is not gonna work. You know, like I'm hungry, and I, you, just like I said in the hall, you can't make someone be as hungry as you. You can't make someone share your vision. No, of course not. Absolutely not. So, so let me touch. Let me touch on when you when with when you were with Artist Direct, your your tone changed. Now. The record label wanted you to just clean up the whole act. It didn't really want... It's not even that. It was before that. See, Robert Clavillis, all right? CNC Music Factory. Okay. All right? And you now, was working with him. I was working with him. What happened was when I got with Max, Max was like, yo, Robert Clavillis from CNC Music Factory, he's looking to do a project, um, and you're dope, you know? So let, okay. let me bring you to him. So I brought me to him. We started working. You know, uh, I had some demos. Rob really wasn't feeling it. It was like... Hip hop. I mean, the no, sh the it shit was that, yeah, it was not hardcore, but it, but it was way harder than the shit that I wound up making. <laughs> you know? And so he he wanted to do some commercial shit, 
which is cool. I was like, all right. I mean, I, I like money. You know, I, I feel like I feel like if I could do something, wow. you know what I'm saying? I feel like if I could do something where I'm like, feel like I'm not compromising myself. So okay, I think it's you. dope. And at the same time, pleasing him commercially, mm -hmm. <clears throat> then I could win both ways. Okay. At the time, I didn't, you know, I didn't see the pitfall that this was, you know, like, but at the time, you know, I was like, all right, I could, I could do this. I could, I could tread this line, you know? Yeah. So, uh, you know, cut to la la la, you know what I mean? Right. Let's, la, yeah, la, yeah, la. let's bring so, it up there. Yeah. So Rob, you know, is paying for the video, you know, 250000 the video and oh, the album man. budget, you know what I mean? And Civilis. Then, Clavillus, yeah. yeah and, Clavillus. So, and so you find yourself, you know, that's the problem, man. You make one compromise and then one turns into another one. Yeah, of course. And then it's like a domino you know effect. It, you wake up and you're like, what did I, what have I become? And it's not to say that he didn't do great work and he didn't have my best interests in mind. You right. know what I mean, it's not at all. And he's a great person and, you know, much love to him. But we, the vision, you know what I'm saying? Like, I had this vision of, like, yo, I could be like, like the street version of M, you know what I mean, with like, like respect and just be lyrical and okay, do all this stuff. Gotcha. And he had like a whole like I don't even just something else, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like we could sell a million records and you could be on the Grammys and you know that type of shit. And, uh, <laughs> so wait, all right. So I remember when La La when 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 Roll with MVP came out. Yeah, yeah. And um, one of the big things that got you noticed was they were playing your video on BET Uncut yeah. every night. Every night. Every night. Yeah, yeah, they were playing it. Well, we, I, I ended up finding out that you would, that, that you had a connect out there. Yeah. So tell me about how to... So through the, Max, through my boy Max. So Max was working as an A2 on the set of 106 and Park in Rap City. Right? Okay. This was when the studio was at 106 and Park. Now they're on like uh, CBS Studios at 55th and 10th. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I asked Max, yo, Max, I had went to school to be an engineer. So I was like, Max, yo, you think you can hook me up with an internship at BT? Okay. And he was like, you know, Stag, everybody always asks me for a job, but you're the only person to ask me for an for internship. For an internship. So I'm going to hook you paid. up. Not getting nothing. Just want to be there, you know? Mm -hmm. So he's like, come tomorrow at 10 o'clock. You work 10 to 6. So every day now, like five days a week, I was showing up to BT, uh, 10 to 6. I was putting batteries in headsets, doing the mic checks with the artists. Like my first day oh. was like Mariah Carey, Patti LaBelle, or the whole Wu-Tang Clan. Woo! And so I would go backstage before they went on stage, and I would get to go up to each single artist and be like, yeah, give me a mic check, give me a mic check, and then talk to the guy in the booth. You got that? All right, cool. Yo, Method Man, give me the mic. Yo, oh, Inspector Deck, man. give me the mic. It was crazy. It was crazy. Method so, man, you know, the same thing with, with this is when Free and AJ were on. So okay, like, yeah, yeah. Wiring up Free's mic on, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, trying to get it over that 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 just um that bump she got back there. Yeah, that, sometimes it'd take a couple tries. <laughs> you know, like, I just can't get couple, it. Can't the get batteries it. You, aren't working. Yeah, I'm going to need you to put your leg up on the desk. So right, so I can right. Get there. Under, and, yeah. yeah. Actually, right. Max would never, he would always took care of that. I was always getting AJ's mic, you know what I mean? <laughs> what is Free doing? I don't know. Um, she had a deal, actually. She you was know, dope. She I heard her in the studio. She was dope. I don't yeah, know what happened. Man. I don't know what happened. Well, I, you know, it's... You know, it's changing now. The industry is now changing because before you were so pigeonholed into what you wanted to do. Now everybody is a jack of all trades. Like, I remember 15, 20 years ago, even 10 years ago, you could not be, be an uh, uh, actor and then be a singer as no, well. No, yeah. no. Now you got Haley Steinfeld, yeah. this girl. Yeah. Now she's got records out. She's got movies yeah, out. Now like you got cats that's rapping and they're like, yeah, and I did the artwork and you now I'm in my own distribution company and look, I do websites. And yeah, yeah, I got my own like, coffee. Yeah, like, yeah and you're like, damn, that's bean. crazy, like, man. Look, why don't we talk about it over dinner? They're like, yo, I own a restaurant. You're like, all right. Like, <laughs> okay. like yo, it's yeah. the, 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 the industry has now catered toward you building brands Instead, of, before it was just yeah. like, all right, you got signed to the label, and boom, you're gonna be here. You signed up for like four years, six years, eight years, ten years. Yeah. You know, what forever. I'm yeah. yeah, dude. <laughs> like people don't understand if you get a three album deal, that's the, their like, label can that's like that into twelve years. Right. They can six album deal. The, the, the standard is a six album deal. Yeah. Or five with an option for a six. The, la or, or the either, label's discretion. Yeah. After two years, after the two, yeah. uh, second album, you renegotiate your contract. Yeah. And so as long as they're providing you with the tools to create an album, studio, uh, you know, i.e. studio time, production, mm -hmm. and they uh, they don't have Video to Video budget and all, all that. that. But they, they could give you the minimal amount of that shit. Like, just give you some beats. No matter how many joints you do, this is great. You submit it to them and like, yeah, you know, we don't like it. 
You know what I mean? And so they could just keep holding you down. You could just be locked in this deal like, oh, my God, nobody's gonna ever... You know, you pissed the wrong guy off in the label. And you yeah, never... You stuck. You stuck, man. And, like, that's exactly what happened to me on Universal, man. Like, exactly what happened. You know, like... I mean, we'll get into it. We'll get yeah, into yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But take but, me back to when you, were, you you was at BET. BET, yeah. So how so, did so BET every day I'm cut? showing up. Yeah, I'm showing up and I'm working and I'm establishing relationships with Ty. You know, the, the, the program director, Kelly Griffin... The uh, just everyone, everyone on set from the, you know, I was a production assistant basically, which yeah. gives you a lot of access, man. You're going, getting coffee, you're, you know, I'm, I'm uh, setting up the stage for the instruments, I'm breaking it down, I'm wrapping cables, you know. But I enjoyed it. I was getting access to stars, yeah, and, of course, and behind the scenes. And so, being that I had established a relationship, and that's what happened with a lot of people in my career, they would see me on TV and be like, "Oh, I hate this kid." You know what I mean? They would never meet me, but they would hear something and be like, "I hate him. I just don't like him." You know, he ain't yeah. real hip hop. You know, whatever. But then when I would meet people and I would talk to them, they would be see what I was about and they'd be like, "Oh, all right, I, now I get it." You know what I mean? Yeah, now I get now it. Now it connects. So these people got it, and then um, at the time I was working with Rob, we were working on the project, la la. So when the, it came time, we shot the video and we wanted to get played. Kelly Griffin was the first one we went to on BET, wow. and he was like, "No problem, definitely stack, definitely we got you." You know what I mean? And Damn, immediately that's started cool. playing my shit. Yeah, Big Ticket did the intro on my album. Like, I got a lot of love. BET showed me a lot of love. I, That's what's up. Yeah, Ty, Max Perez, Kelly Griffin. Mm -hmm. I got a lot of love for those people. That's man. what's up. Yeah. So, because I remember, uh, the timeline gets a little blurry because I, I don't have anything. But I remember when your album, Game of Breath, was supposed to be released. Oh, man, and it was it was dope. You know, it was dope. The, the album was dope. Yeah, I heard, I, heard I, I came to the album release party. Mm -hmm. But the pro... Hmm. So wait, so, so, <laughs> Gypsy. So I'm at his album release party, right? Okay, where was it at? Uh, Somewhere, some, man. Some trendy some, club. Some trendy in, club yeah, in Manhattan. Yeah, some scores. <laughs> Don't nah, believe me. Yeah. Yo, so yeah. Stag and the rest. Now, I was working with one of the, the, the producers that he was working with. Okay. Renz. Shout out Renz, to Renz. Yeah, Renz. What's going Renz, on? Yeah, shout out. Um, so we're, we're there, and I'm there. I'm chilling, and I'm dancing with this chick. Like, I'm up on her. I'm a, so... I see Stag and the rest of them standing over in the corner like. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, yo, am I doing something wrong? Am right. I not supposed to be up on this chick? Right. So I go up to Stag. I was like, yo, what's up? He was like, yo, do you know who you was dancing with? I was like, no. I was like, it's dark in the club. Right. You know what I'm saying? I got my hand on the back, you know, small in the right, back. Right, right, right. He was like, uh, that's Spike Lee's sister, bro. Oh. I was like, oh, damn, from uh, Mo' Better Blues. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. His real sister. His real sister. Yeah. He was real sister. And I was yeah. like, I was like, oh, oh, okay. Yeah. He was like, he was like, yo, dude, you better go do you. Yeah, yeah. she's into his shit. And just in <laughs> case you're wondering, that's the type of A-list clientele <laughs> right. that uh, was frequenting my parties in Manhattan. Yo, you know what I'm saying? Like, so crazy, man. Yeah. But how did the how did the MVP compilation album end up getting released before yours? Yo, what happened was because when I went to Rob, I was solo rapper Stagalish on some street shit, and then while recording this stuff, we had Vice Verse come in, <laughs> he was very talented R and B singer, and he was like my hype man. Doing he just came in to do some ad libs. He did the reggae voice on uh, Rock Your Body. Yeah, ultra talented. And then we had the girl Jasmine Ray again, super talented. Yeah, the, the, was she like Indian or something? She no, was no, hot. she's. I think she's black and Puerto Rican. Oh man, like, yeah. she was ooh. awesome girl too. Like beautiful I met person. Her, I met her artist. at the party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did yeah. you dance with her too? No, but oh. my penis went. Ooh, ooh. Yeah, yeah, she's <laughs> definitely. So they came in to work as like extras, like like guest stars on some Stag Lee shit. And then what happened was Stag Lee was uh, an artist, and this became a way. If they put us together as a collective, MVP, right. okay. this just became a slick way of me to have more than one record deal. You know what I'm saying? Because at the time, I had multiple offers. Because it says Staggly Presents You know what I'm saying? So at the time, I had MVP. multiple offers. So Artist Direct, I'm signed as an artist. We're doing Game of Breath. I'm Staggly. But now, um, Universal wanted to sign us with the Rock Casablanca. Tommy Matola wanted right. to sign us for the Rocky Body. So how could we do that and not... And fuck not, over it, artists yeah, direct. Yeah. Okay, now it's MVP. So that was just a way of doing that. Oh, and okay. Unfortunately, Ted Field is not stupid. And so he was like, oh, wait a second. I thought that Rocky Body record was mine because that was already charting. We put it out independent. So when we signed it to Tommy Matola's label, Ted Field, we, we soured that relationship. Oh. And so that's why Game of Breath wanted to never come out. He was like, yeah, fuck y'all. Like, I don't, you know, and that's kind of what happened. You know what I mean? Like, it's fucked up, but you can't play Damn. with these people with money, man. You can't play with their shit like that. They think they have something, and you snatch it out from under them. Yeah, because the, I remember when the compilation yeah. album dropped, and I went and copped it, and I was like, oh, shit, this shit is on Motown. 
Yeah, Universal Motown. Yeah, yeah, it was Universal. It used to, yeah, it said Universal yeah, they, they, Slash. They killed my record. They killed it. You know, uh, Avery Lippman, Monty Lippman was the president of Universal at the time, and his right. brother was Avery Lippman. Avery Lippman had signed an artist, Baby Bash, right, who at the time yeah. had a record, Sugar Sugar. Sugar Sugar now, with uh, Frankie, Frankie, Frankie J. J. Frankie J. I, I met and knew both of them real well. I knew Frankie J real well. Great guys. Baby I mean, Bash. Frankie cool J's from the Bronx. No, and he's from California. So Is he from Cali? Yeah. He was um, out here a lot, yeah, though. Yeah, cool kid, cool kid. You know, uh, Baby Bash, same thing, cool as hell, but could not be less interested in his career or being a hip hop artist. Just like put a record out and was just like, yeah, whatever. If the what, shit don't baby, work. The Baby Bash? Baby Bash. Yeah, just yeah, like, yeah. He was like into pimping or something. He was making money without uh, hip hop. <laughs> you know I mean? He didn't need that music shit. He didn't need that music He did not need it. And he could strong. not be more interested. He had a number one hit. He was a uh, yeah. 90s, 90s number but, uh, one. He. But the thing was, Avery Lippman, the president of Universal's brother, Avery Lippman, had signed him, Baby Bash. And so at that time, it was, uh, okay, which of these records are we going to put the push behind? Is it going to be Baby Bash, who was signed by the president's brother? Right. Or is it going to be Stagli, who was signed by uh, Robert Clavillis, who kind of had a strained relationship with some of those people inside right. the record yeah, label? Yeah, yeah, And um, so I knew, I mean, you know, they were they you know killed the ins my and out. record, man. Yeah, they yeah, they knew, they knew the ins and outs of it. They killed because it. that Baby Bash record went to number one. Yeah, but and you know what? They, someone in the label was not paying attention, man, because if they would have took the time to see me as an artist, they would have been like, yo, this kid can have longevity because he's about it. You know, and this other dude, he doesn't give a shit. This is going to be a one-hit wonder. But and to me, to them, I'm a tax write-off. You know what I'm saying? Oh, it didn't no, of work, course. You know, so. I, I, we just had that conversation last yeah. week. We were saying 90%, 90% of the artists that are signed to record labels never make it. Never There's only made. a 10%. Yeah. That's why. Even that's less, why I would think. Yeah, for yeah. every one you see, there's a thousand that, that whose projects didn't work, yeah, or, yeah. or for any number of reasons why they didn't get the push. You know, they pissed someone off, they fucked the wrong girl, someone's <laughs> daughter. Just any. Yo, dude, the, polis, the <clears throat> politics. Of, don't be pointing at me, it's hey, crazy. Aaron. Yeah. Yo, Aaron, man. Yo, I have never. Yo, dude, I do not put my penis inside. Just to tip, of, just for a second. Just no, 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 <laughs> bro. Yo, I learned that shit early in my career, bro. I remember there was a, a, a producer, and I forget his name, and I'm sorry. And when I think of it, I'll shout you out next week. But he told me. That I was like, like 14, 15. He was like, yo, when it comes to these chicks in this industry, especially if they got some kind of pull, do not mess with them. Oh, yeah. Don't don't f with them at all. Don't fuck with them at all. Because nah. you're gonna end up you're gonna end up putting yourself in a hole that you cannot get out of. Yeah, yeah. It's and that was one a... of the reasons why that I didn't take the two deals that I was offered. Yeah, sometimes it's better to keep the sexual tension anyway. You know what I mean? Right. Because as long yeah, as yeah, that's yeah. there and you haven't crossed the line, then that's fine. But yeah, once you cross the line, you're done. Yeah, it's a wrap. Yeah. So bring me up to speed now, man. I I know you you ran into some troubles with the law there yeah, for yeah. a minute, man. Yeah. I mean, you know, it, it's like... <sighs> Which is well, another thing. All right, so I went to jail. I went to federal prison. I went to the feds. Oh, shit. For a little over a year. I'm not going to glorify that. No, I, no, I no. just will say that because we, it's a public we... record. And so I just got out, you know, um, July. I got out July 8th. Drugs, of course. You know what I mean? Man. I got into hustling, and um, I got into some trouble. Uh, That's amazing. Yeah. You didn't get into it when you were like... Hu like, when you were... Really grinding real fucking hard. Yeah. Like when you were 16, 17. Yeah, people would equate, you know, the, the music artist lifestyle with you know, what yeah. drugs, rock and roll. Yeah. yeah, yeah, of course. Which is crazy because years ago, one of the things on me, one of the knocks on me was like, oh, he don't got no street cred. He ain't street. And then right. um, then I went to jail and I get out. And then I remember I was trying to work with some producer from Universal recently. And they didn't want to they didn't want to fuck with me because, and I quote, the prison thing. And I'm like, <laughs> you guys got to make up your mind, bro. <laughs> Like first, I'm not street. I'm not street enough. Now I'm too street. Yeah, I like uh, I just got wow. out. You know, and that's crazy. So that's when I realized I was like, man, it was a, it was a, a moment of realization. I was like, damn it, you know, if I knew that no matter what I would was gonna do, they were gonna hate on me, I would have never made any compromise, and I would have just stayed true to what I wanted yeah. to do. Because at the end of the day, you got and I'm, it's cliche, but you have to wake up with yourself, man. You gotta look at yourself in the mirror. And now I have to look at those regrets. You know, it's not, I mean, I've, not, I've not a regret, grips. but yeah, yeah, yeah but. I've come to grips. I mean, I'm not, I don't wait, I don't lose sleep at night. Like, oh, I should have put that other record out, you know, but you gotta, you make one compromise, it turns into another thing. And at the end of the day, you're the one who's got to go to sleep at night and be happy with what you're, you're putting out. So, um, you might as well just do what feels good to you. You know, uh, I got in trouble. 
you know, I came out, I mean, and it was, you know, a situation where I, you know, I wasn't really even doing like no kingpin. I don't want to portray it like that. I just no, got just... caught doing some shit and they wanted me to rat some other people out, which I wouldn't do, you know? So yeah, then I course, had to do that's... some time, whatever, you know? Um, which is another thing too. We got in trouble, you know, everyone's all gangster, you know, we got in trouble and then everyone pointed the finger at me. You know what I'm saying? It's like, well, I mean, you're the only white dude with them blue eyes, man. <laughs> yeah. It's like it was Eddie, a white boy. Like Eddie Murphy. You know what Get I mean? Like, him. yeah, everyone got in a fight and then everyone sued me. You know what I'm saying? Oh, like, the light shit. fell, causing a weird effect, and I need 12 million <laughs> for my sprained eye. And I'm like, yeah, it's great. Because you know, it was like, well, he could get a lawyer. That's Stag Lee. He could afford a lawyer. You know, he's doing his thing. He got money. And I'm like, if I had money, I wouldn't be doing this shit with y'all. You know, like, Damn, so. Man. But you you yeah. got some you 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 uh did the what the twenty fifth anniversary of uh CNC Music Factory uh you know everybody dance now you know that whole yeah. thing look uh, he did the head shake when I did it he's like, yeah yeah that whole thing um so he's putting out a twenty fifth anniversary remix um where I'm the rap on it now you know okay I mean? so, so instead freedom of, freedom instead Williams of freedom Williams um which original rap was dope you know not taking nothing away from him i don't even know what the deal is politically with that yeah i, I think just freedom, know freedom the... wasn't from what i understand freedom didn't receive his royalties as he, he should he, have. you know what i i know i do know rob personally man and i know there's a lot of knock on him <laughs> for for shit like that and i will i will be honest with well, you. i've I mean, been around he him a lot of problems with that I, Martha I, know, Walsh I know but I, I happen to have intimate knowledge of that situation and, okay. and i'm talking have, i've been privy to phone calls and conversations yeah yeah not it's just not all, not it's just not being, all that it's cracked. not all it's cracked up to be man yeah, rob yeah. I mean, in his defense, you know what I'm saying? I'm not saying he's perfect, but in his defense, I mean, he told the girl, you, we're going to use someone else in the video because, you know, she's more marketable. You know what I mean? And uh, they did that. The video blew up. Nobody knew it was going to blow up. And then the girl got bitter. You know what I'm saying? That's that's my understanding of okay. the situation. Yeah, well, so, Martha Wash. Yeah. So, I mean, to be perfectly honest with you, Martha Wash, she was, she was, she's a big name. She was part of the Weather Girls. She's dope. You know what I'm uh, saying? Uh, she's uh, an amazing uh, singer. Once she, in a lifetime talent, man. I heard her. You know, she, yeah, she's yeah. dope. But. You know, she's a, after, big, she's after a bigger shit, girl. Yeah. And at the time, they wanted to do something after, that was after more shit blow, After shit blows up, everybody comes out the woodwork. Yeah, yeah. Because I got my album coming out, right? And one of the produ a couple of the producers have produced for some big-name artists already. And they was like, I hope your paperwork is in order. Like, I hope that you have all your, all your email correspondence. This is what my lawyer was telling me. Have all your email correspondence. Have all your pay stubs that you, if, if you pay for the track oh, yeah, outright, yeah, you make sure that you pay. Because if one of your records blows the hell up. Yeah, you're done. You're done. Yeah. Everybody comes out the woodwork on. Yeah. I played, I played Triangle on that record. I want publishing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, that's my tambourine. You hear that tambourine? Right that there. was me. Shh, that was me. You yeah, heard that, hand, that, that second hand oh, clap soon. from yeah. Yeah. after the 16 bars? Yeah. That's me, bro. Yeah, I did background ad libs on his record. Yo, yeah, it's it's crazy. Yeah. So, but you 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 still out here doing your thing, man? I'm trying now. Like I said, I got out July 8th. I came. I I was, I was in out of state. I had to get my parole switched over, which took six months. So I moved back to New York. Yeah. yeah. So where were Please. you? Where what hell? Where the hell was you at, man? I was out west. That's you know. No, just actually, leave it alone. I, I was I'll in Montana. No, I was in Montana. My mom lives out in Montana. Uh, shout out to Nickel B and Buckshot Kill It. Those are cats that I was fucking with out there. They showed me a lot of love. Contact. Yeah. Definitely show me love as far as providing me with studio time, giving me shows, really helping me out, like real supportive. And they're doing their thing out there. Like Nickel B does, uh, bring he does the bookings for all the hip hop artists that come out to Bozo, which is a college town. So he's doing his thing, for, you know, for sure. Yeah. Um. So I was doing that, and then, um, but I knew like, all right, I was working this job, and I still wanted to make hip, you know, make music, and I knew that Bozeman was not the place for me to be doing that when I knew I could have been in New York. Gotcha. So I had to wait for the papers to come through so I could move to New York. Got back January 14th, and uh, now this is the Riding first... out ever since. Yeah, well, I mean, this is the first thing that I've done. You know, I've, I've been making, writing music and doing that type of thing, but, you know, everything is different. I mean, I was gone six years, you know, and, and not in jail the whole time, but I no, was gone but you for was, six yeah, years. Yeah, yeah, you, you, you left the and music it's, yeah, alone. and it's different. And, um, and I don't want to say, like, I went away and came back, and now everyone's got these computers. It's not that. It's just, no, you, it's, you it's still totally technology. flipped to that now, like... Twitter, Instagram, and right. if you, it's all about followers, you know, who's got followers, and like, everyone can be a rapper, if you have a YouTube page, and as a result, and that's great, because people can get exposure that they couldn't get prior to wow. that, but it's hard, because now you have to filter through all the bullshit, 
right. to get to. And now I just, you know, I don't got the patience to do it. I hear you, bro. But you know what, man? You, you're still grinding. You're still doing your thing. Man, so trying. let's get to these five indie questions. We got a few minutes left. You know, every uh, every episode we like to ask our guests our five indie questions. Me? You want to ask me the question? Yeah, of All course, right. man. So let's do it. Uh, first one, uh, what does being an independent artist mean to you? An uh, independent artist means to me, and, and if you only knew how much I could appreciate it, it just means not compromising yourself to try to go along with someone else's vision. It's mm. doing, doing what you feel is true to yourself as an artist, being able to wake up and look at yourself in the mirror and know, like, okay, if the shit don't work, I did it the way I wanted to do it and what, the way I thought was dope, but right. it didn't work, you know, and we could figure out why. Okay. Not like it didn't work because I listened to him or because he thought I should be this. Right. It's just staying true to your own vision. There you go. Mm -hmm. Number two. Uh, would you ever sign to another major record label? Hell yeah. <laughs> I mean, what, is it, what, isn't that the reason why we're all here in the first fucking place? I, mean, what's going on? I would sign to a major label, but they would, I, I wouldn't just, you know, I'm not going to be no dancing monkey. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, nah, they, I, I have you, to man. do it the right way. Now labels, they're not trying to sign and develop an artist. They want an artist who's already <laughs> packaged, who have sales. It's like Shark Tank. What have you done? How many records have you sold? Okay, Ooh. now, then, then they'll take you to the next level. Yo, listen to this man right here, man. It is like Shark Tank, yeah, man. Like A&R department doesn't exist in the record label no more. You know it's, what I mean? No, they don't it's have, not. They used to have some guy sign you. He'd take you around to different studios with producers. There used to be development artists. department. Yeah. There's yeah. nothing there either. Not. All right, number three. Uh, who are or what are your major musical influences? Uh, Nas, Cool G Rap, um, Rakim. Um, those would be the major ones right there. Nas, Cool G Rap, Rakim. Okay. Yeah, KRS One even. So yeah. Rick, yeah. Number four, um, if you were offered a deal outside of music, like you would have to leave music alone, like you can't do it anymore, but the pay was there, like everything that you ever wanted from a from a from a financial financial, mm. yeah, but you have to leave. Music is no more. Would you take it? Uh, what would it be doing? Because I have other interests that I, I, mean, I could be okay with. You know what I'm saying? And then and then could I never do music again? I would have to no, step you have to, you have to no, leave. No, no. Okay. okay. I can't all right, all right. So number five, now that you're uh, you're back and you're back in New York as of January, what is your end game? What what is your My end game uh, man, I wanna I wanna I'm gonna do things the right way this time. I'm gonna put out music that I, I'm passionate about. I'm not gonna compromise myself. I wanna do some acting, man. You know, if I do some movies, whatever. I my end game ultimately is to work in radio. That's what I wanna do. I okay. Wanna work in a radio station on their personality, do that type of thing. Um, I had the opportunity one time to go work with Star from Star and Buckwild show. Yeah, yeah. But the la the station he had at the time, the Pulse, it kind of folded before it got started. Right. But I had the opportunity, and um, that's kind of where I want to go. Um, end game is me, house on the beach with a studio in the crib, married to a hot girl, writing for other artists. You right. Know what I'm saying that's what I'm doing. Getting it pop. Yeah. Yo, give that man a round of applause, yo. <laughs> Yo, for real. That's our five indie questions. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, make sure you check us out on YouTube. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, it's uh, YouTube.com. Just put in OTV Live and put in any of our artist names right after it, and we will come up uh, with all our episodes. Um, we chop up our episodes. So if you can't watch it here on Facebook Live, you can watch it on YouTube. Uh, short clips because everybody knows that your attention span is not that good anymore. <laughs> so we do not put replay our episodes. We will be, after we get to episode 10, we will be removing the episodes from Facebook Live. So the only time that you'll be able to rewatch the episodes is via uh, YouTube. So we want to thank uh, Stagger Lee for coming yeah, out tonight. Thank uh, you very much for nah, having me. No, 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 of thank course, you. man. Tell everybody where, where they can find you. Yeah. Social um, media. Yeah, social media, um, basically Instagram, Twitter, it's Mr. Staggerly, M-R-S-T-A-G-G-A-L-E-E, -E. uh, Facebook, Staggerly. I mean, my name's Eric Newman. You can find it just searching those things. You know what I'm saying? I mean, whatever. It's only, I, I might put another album out, just Eric Newman, start from fresh. You, know? uh, you could. You but, could. Uh, those things, I'm working on getting content. I don't want to just put out shit about, you know, what I, what I ate for breakfast that day. I don't think people are that interested. So once I'm, I'm recording now, I'll try to get some new content, and then people will have something to check That's out. That's what's up, man. Yeah. Uh, my name is D Wise. You can follow me at Mr. D Wise uh, on all platforms, or you can check me out uh, here on the OTV Live channel 
or you can check out my music. It's uh, MrDWise.com. Stand by Gypsy. You've been very quiet tonight. You've been You guys are running the show. Nah, it's all right, man. I know you was over there sexting. Yeah, I was. Yeah. You was trying to get that. I already got, you got it. Nah! Yeah! Nah, man. So thank you all very much, man. We'll, we'll see you next time. And as always, folks, keep it indie, baby. Yeah.